1950 Williams Music Might. 10 selection, coin operated, selectable little tabletop jukebox. This is the beginning of this project. Uh, actually, the mechanism and electrical parts have already been restored, but uh, I'm going through the, th the theory of operation on this because it is at first complicated and it looks very intimidating. We have the selector assembly up here, the credit unit here, the selector unit here, the play control relay here. The amplifier has been removed for clarity and so has the power transfer because I have to replace that. And the mechanism is sitting over here. We'll get to that in a minute. Actually, we're going to get to that right now because there's one thing that's very important. You take apart a music mic, if you take the mechanism out of the cabinet, there's one thing you absolutely have to do. You have to cycle the cam turn it manually by hand, clockwise only, never, ever, ever turn it counterclockwise. The reason you're doing this is you are getting the arms out of the way. You're pulling the arms in. There's an arm underneath here for the lifting assembly, and you want that out of the way. Otherwise, you can't get it out of the cabinet. And we're going to go back to this in a while. Okay. To begin with, when this is in, when the, when the music mic is plugged in and there's no coins uh, put in the machine. Uh, it's just in standby and the cabinet lights are lit. Nothing else is happening. At that point, this relay is going to be energized. Common cause of confusion. People don't, they say, wow, it's energized but nothing's happening. Well, that's the way it's wired. That's the way it's supposed to be. This relay is pulled in until one, until something happens. You drop a coin in and the solenoid on this the lower solenoid on this one pulls in and it steps up this white post and it closes the circuit on the coin switch to enable the mechanism to start running. Now, it's still not going to start running. This relay is going to stay down unless one of the following three things happens. The Either the arm has to be at the end of the record so that it's in the trip position, or you press the side button on the cabinet that's rejecting to reject a record, or you make a selection on the top panel here. Any of those three things that happens will start the mechanism uh, cam moving to cycle, to start the mechanism into its cycle. Now, once, now we can go over the mechanism here. And we're going to go to the, the resting position, or play position, right here. This is now the play position. Imagine that the record is playing. When you press a selection, you've established credits, you've put coins in, you've established credits. Once you make a, a, a press a button on the front panel, the first thing that's going to happen is this is going to start to move. At that point, it opens this top switch here to mute the sound so that you don't have any noise coming from the speaker during the cycle. The other thing it does is it uh, makes the middle connection, the middle switch connects to keep the motor running for a complete cycle. It opens up the circuit to the uh, tone arm latch control relay. It continues it brings the arm over. It starts to lift the records up right here. So far it's all doing this and that's not going to stop yet. When it gets to this point right here, you hear that click? This switch just turned on. What this does now, this switch will reset the selector because this has to start from zero. It'll pull that down and it pulls down this assembly right here, this 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 series fingers and dots here. There's one dot for each selection, and this this selector assembly does several things. With each dot, there's a one dot to each lamp of the selection now playing one through ten, so it'll light up the correct dot. It also has a circuit that completes to the cancel coils, so that it pops the coil back out when it gets to where it wants to go. But anyway, so now we are at reset. It resets the uh, the thing back to zero, and it also, at the same time that it resets 
the machine, the, the reset coil, it also takes away a credit with the front coil here, like that. It, un, it resets the coil to take away a credit. So dropping in a coin makes the credit post go up, like that. And when it's in the reset mode, it takes away one credit for each cycle it goes through. All right, now we're back to the cam. Now we're cycling, continually cycling through. It is lowering the records back, back on. And at this point, bing, it drops into this position. It's not ready to play yet. It has now completed the circuit to the relay that's under the turntable. This is always moving, by the way. This is, this is a typical RCA RP168 turntable. This turntable is always moving. And now this, the uh, circuit is complete to the record dropping circuit. And depending on which selection you've pushed, this, will, this is going to pulse each time it goes around. It's going to pulse. And it's going to start counting records. And that's where your selector unit is going to step up. If you've played number five, it's going to go ka-chunk, Chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, five times. When it gets to number five, the switch will be met. The, the connection will be met up here in the selector at number five. It will stop this from doing that. And at that point, it has dropped the records. It has dropped five records. And then this relay pulls in and lets the arm come over to play the record. And then after it's all done, it's the whole when it goes to the end of the record. If there's no credits, it'll just shut off with a needle right at the end of the record, right, waiting for the next nickel to be put in. And that's it so far. There's a lot more to cover, and we'll go into that later.